Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. Today I'll be mostly talking about multicolor cards coming out of Anniversary Box 2022, but I should have probably lumped this one in yesterday's video, Poutine Schemes Most Wicked, just for the theme of today's video. But anyways, let's talk about this one really quick and then we'll get into all the multicolor stuff. One drop 4K, we have Auto Limit 1. If your leader is black and you remove one of your skillless battle cards from the game, when this card is using a combo, draw one. So this is mostly support for token Toa, but you can use it in some other niche things like Black Kid Goku if you're still playing that or anything that plays the blocker negate for Black, for example. But uh, still, this is definitely mainly for token Toa. Activate main limit one. If your leader is a Black Toa card and discards a card from your hand, look up to five cards from the top of your deck, add up to one Evil Wizard or Demon God card, both Black with an energy cost of five or less, or one Black Unison with a specified cost of three among limits your hand then shuffle your deck. So this card was sorely needed for the deck because you absolutely need that unison on turn three. Between this card and the three copies of Mirror Unison and the new uh, Gravy Poutine Unison, maybe there's something cool there with Toa, but I don't think Black is in a position where it can really uh, kind of dive headfirst into the meta by any means. Maybe it's kind of more cool on a rogue level. It's nice that Dormant's like not a thing in the meta either, so your uh, tokens aren't always gonna be getting wiped, but Again, like the power levels compared to red right now, uh, maybe it's going to be pretty tough to get this thing into the meta, but who knows? It could be an inter interesting one to try out. All right, SS Broly, the Demon Revived, 2 drop 15k. We have a red, green, Z battle card. Now, note, this costs one red and one green energy, but the uh, Z energy requirement can be any color, not even red or green, so just keep that in mind. Permanent, if your leader is a Broly card, ignore this card's specified cost in all areas, and this card can't be KO'd by skills while it's in a battle area. So, yeah, this is going to be a two cost of any color. So there's like the red Broly leader that you can only play Broly cards in your deck. That's also going to apply to your Z deck. And then, of course, you got green old old school Broly. You've got black Broly and you've got um, the red green Surge Broly. So those are all decks for this guy. When this card attacks, you have to one red or green card with 5k combo from your drop in a combo. The skills negated for the turn. And if you have four or fewer cards in your hand, draw one. That's actually pretty nice for black Broly for one, because that leader is probably going to have very few cards in hand. And also not bad for Surge Broly because a lot of times Surge Broly doesn't uh, increase his hand size. He just combos and draws, keeping it at parity. So that's kind of nice there. Active main once per turn. Discard one card from your hand. Add up to one card from your life to your hand. And then choose one. Your opponent either pitches a card from their hand or you get to KO something 20k or less. This card seems solid. I mean, as far as like old school Broly support goes, this does a lot. I do like it. Surge Broly, maybe there's some potential there. Uh, we talked about the Black Broly Surge Leader yesterday, and I don't think it's going to be all that great, just because, again, the old leader is very, very weak, and the Surge Leader is cool, but costs two, and makes you pitch more cards to play things. So, don't see so much potential in that one, but Red Green Broly, quite possibly. Maybe even Old School Broly, because some people are making Set 1 Broly work uh, for a bit there at the Rogue level. That could be a pretty cool thing. All right, Super Baby 1, Parasitic come up in. So we have a 2-drop 15k unique barrier. If there are four or more brainwash cards in your drop, this card gains deflect in all areas. Auto, place one card from your hand at the bottom of your deck. When this card's played, add up to one Dr. Mew the Mastermind, which is the deck's graceful charity, if you're familiar with the Yu-Gi-Oh term. Uh, from your deck to your hand, then shuffle your deck and then activate main limit one. If your leader's a yellow baby card, play up to one Super Baby 2 Vengeful Rampage from your hand on top of this card, which if you don't know, is a 25k dual attacker with offering, and when you play it, you can negate all the skills of your opponent's battle cards on their board, ignoring barrier. So I have actually messed around with Baby with this card because it did intrigue me quite a bit. Um, it's definitely a cool addition to the deck, but costing two definitely uh, takes up a lot of energy, I'd say, on, on a deck that wants to be very, very aggressive. The Baby that it plays is definitely not the strongest one they could have picked. They could have um, chosen to support the older five drop or the other five drop, I guess. The one that like you pitch three cards and you're minus your opponent's whole board and then a leader by 20 or something along those lines that could have been a little bit better or maybe it could have just been any five cost baby that would have been pretty cool but searching the doctor me from the deck is is definitely a really nice consistency thing that part has been really cool about this card um uh, but yeah the card is I'm, in my opinion not gonna make baby a meta deck but it could be like a rogue glass cannon type of strategy it can get a lot of attacks off by turn two so that's definitely one thing for sure Hit Pursuing Improvement, 2 drop 15k, Deflect, Blocker. If you have 3 or more energy when this card attacks or activates Blocker, use up to 1 blue-yellow multicolor Universe 6 from your drop in a combo that skills negated for the turn. Then at the end of the turn, switch one of your energy to Active Mode. At the end of your turn, switch this card to Active Mode. So that's nice, you're getting the 15k attack, you're getting the block, and you're getting the um, 
I guess, like Z energy generation as well as arrival fodder. Um, this card's not bad, but the weird thing about so many of these Z battle cards is that they don't have barrier, but they're like engine cards. There's a bunch of these cards that um, if they live on the board for a long amount of time, they're going to allow these decks to um, continue to play their engine and increase their uh, card advantage. But they don't have barriers, so they're going to just die super quickly, whether it's to some sort of counterplay or some sort of negate or just on the following turn, just die to battle or die to card effects. So, yeah, I mean, I just don't expect this thing to live very long unless you have a method of giving it barrier. And I don't think there is a way in U6 to do that. I could be wrong. But, yeah, these engine cards are cool, but they're not going to stick around enough to generate enough value, at least in terms of, like, meta gameplay. Then we have Chilled, Ruling Through Fear. We have a 5-drop 20k arrival for a red and a blue. Dual attack blocker. If a red-blue multicolor is in your energy, reduce the combo of this card in your hand by 1, so it's a free 5k. When this card's played, look at the top 5 cards of your deck. Add up to 1 red or blue Frieza clan with an energy cost of 5 or less. Some of them to your hand. Shuffle your deck and then choose one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier. And it gets minus 15k power for the turn. So some more uh, cooler mill support. Not a bad card at all. Searching cooler tyrannical assault is definitely a pretty neat thing. You can also search Frieza 100% overdrive, but that card's probably a lot less relevant now than it has been in the past. But that's all. That's always a card that can actually come back into the meta if things slow down with Rebirth of Justice, for example. So cool card. Cooler mill is a solid deck. Like it's a decent rogue deck. It's um it's gonna get a nice boost from this, but uh, I think it'll always kind of just sit in that rogue category. Piccolo, three moves ahead, five drop, 20k, energy exhaust, critical blocker, arrival for blue and green. When this card's played, draw one card, then choose one of your opponent's battle cards, and it can't attack or activate blocker for the turn. So this is an interesting defensive arrival. It does have some offensive capabilities, like negating a blocker is pretty good. But um, yeah, arriving this thing on defense and basically stunning a battle card is not the worst thing. It also blocks itself. At the end of your turn, switch this card to active mode. So you're uh, incentivized to attack with it if they're critical, and then restand it. Blue green's definitely been in a weird spot. Like besides androids, it, there's no such thing as like a blue green generic deck. Maybe that'll change in the near future because we are getting some multicolor support in the next set, at least from what we've seen from Comic Con. So if they do print some more generic blue green cards or um, generic multicolor cards in general, maybe we can start building some things with that. But as far as standalone cards, this card's pretty cool. I guess it's not like bringing anything in particular back into the meta, but I do like this card a lot. All right, next up we have Cell Unending Despair with a slew of cards that go along with it. So we have an eight drop 15K and it's a 5K combo with one energy cost. What a weird like pairing of stats, just something that I find funny. But anyways, we have a barrier battle card, arrival for a green or a yellow energy. Permanent, if your leader is green or an Android card, reduce the combo cost of this card in your hand by one. Actually, green yellow has like several cards that are, are free 5K combos. Like it's so weird that they've given so many of those like one color combination, like green yellow. But like, I'm pretty sure red yellow doesn't have a single one of those. So I, I don't know why they chose to do that, but permanent. If your leader is a green cell card and there are no cards under this card, reduce this card's energy cost by one, which is gonna be relevant for what we're about to read with the parasitic ball and the dark parasite. Now I'm pretty sure as far as successor goes, I think the ruling was successor always checks the card's original energy cost. I could be wrong on that. It's definitely been quite some time since I've actually looked at successor rulings because it hasn't been relevant in God knows how long, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So the energy cost reduction should only be relevant for the two-star ball. But anyways, when this card's played, add up to one two-star ball, Parasitic Darkness from your deck to your hand, then shuffle your deck, activate main limit one. If your leader is a green cell card, your leader is also treated as yellow for the turn. So, so that's actually a really, really weird effect. Um, besides the obvious, like certain, you know, cards requiring certain leader colors, I'm not sure if that's gonna be relevant to any of the actual cell cards I'll read in a second, but let's go on to two star ball. So it's got a permanent, this card gains Dragon Ball, or Dark Dragon Ball in all areas. Activate battle, you can basically combo with it and activate main, choose one of your cell cards with energy cost of seven or nine and place this card under it. So hence the cost reduction on cell and un unending despair. Then choose one green cell Zeno with energy cost of nine in your deck or hand, play it and shuffle your deck if you look through it. So. Uh, that's another weird thing on this card that might be a misprint. I'm not sure if this card's errated or not, but it says choose one of your cells and place this card under it, then choose one cell Xeno and play it, not play it on top of the card. So I'm not sure if that was ever clarified. This engine was never like meta relevant, so I don't know if they ever had to clarify it, but basically it looks like you get a 15k next to a 30k, which is kind of interesting. But going on to Cell the Dark Parasite, this is a super huge cornerstone of Cell Surge. And I don't know if it's gonna work properly in any other cell leader. Let's give it a quick read. So 
Activate Manic Leader is a green yellow multicolor cell card. You send this card from your drop to your warp, draw one, then add up to one card from your life to your hand. So that line right there, if your leader is a green yellow multicolor cell, yes, the activate main on unending despair makes your leader yellow for the turn, but does that make it officially classify as multicolor? Possibly, but uh the other leaders that like the draft boss leaders, for example, that count as all the different colors. I don't think they count as multicolor leaders. I could be wrong on that. This could definitely be an FAQ type of thing we have to wait for, but it's definitely a very, very weird one. But the next activate main, if leaders are green, yellow, multicolor cell card, if you have four or more energy and you choose all your non-token battle cards and place them in the owner's drops, play this card from your hand. You can't play copies of this card for the turn. So you have potential for a, a free 30K battle card. Uh, yeah, so again, like it all just matters if the cell cards you can turn into yellow become multicolor or not otherwise it's just a free 30k at the end of the day which is not necessarily a bad thing don't get me wrong but if you can't use the rest of the effects it's obviously going to make the card a little bit worse but anyways guys that's what i wanted to cover in today's video um some interesting cards for sure uh nothing that's going to like overthrow the meta in my opinion but if you guys agree or disagree please feel free to let me know in the comments thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one